بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد continue reading the first fundamental from the three fundamentals الأصل الأول من الأصول الثلاثة معرفة الرب سبحانه وتعالى knowing knowing the Lord <coughs> having knowledge of Allah عز وجل having knowledge of the creator of the heavens and the earth سبحانه وتعالى knowing him by his signs that he has in his creation and also knowing him by his signs that he has revealed himself to us by way of in his legislation subhanahu wa ta'ala from those legislative signs <clears throat> and the way that a believer can know their Lord is the statement of Allah Azza wa as the author has mentioned inna rabbakum allahu alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-ard fi sittati ayyam thumma stawa ala al-arsh yugshi al-layla al-nahara يُغْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارَ يَطْلُبُهُ حَثِيثًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ وَالنُّجُومَ مُسَخَرَاتٍ بِأَمْرِهِ أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ تَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that verily your Lord is Allah. مَنْ رَبُّكْ إِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ Allah. Who is your Lord? Verily. Allah he has mentioned verily your Lord is Allah. And then he described Something from his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, الذي خالق السماوات والأرض, the one who has created the heavens and the earth in six days. ثم استوى على العرش, and then he rose above the throne in a manner befitting his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, again informing us of himself. So this verse is clarifying who the Lord is, and also clarifying some of those magnificent and beautiful attributes of the Lord, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the Lord of Ar-Rabb, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is the creator of the heavens and the earth, that He created the heavens and the earth in six days, that He rose above the throne in a manner befitting His majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also from this attribute here, the ulama have uh, mentioned that this is an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who also from His beautiful names and attributes, Al-Ali, Al-Ali, the high and lofty, and He is high, and meaning that He is above the heavens. Above the throne in a manner befitting His Majesty, fil ulu, Subhanahu wa Taala. He rose above the throne, meaning that He is above the heavens, and and above His throne, in a manner befitting His Majesty, uh, Subhanahu wa Taala. He's not in His creation. He's not in the heavens. He's not in the earth. He's not mixed inside of His creation, Subhanahu wa Taala. Rather, He is above. His creation, the Arsh, we have, as we have seen in previous classes, is the greatest of the creation, the widest and the largest of the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, the Arsh, and above the Arsh, in a manner befitting His Majesty, Allah Azza wa Jal, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Ar-Rahmanu ala Arsh Istawa, Ar-Rahmanu ala Arsh Istawa. So we have been reading likewise, uh, or the verse continues, Allah Azza wa Jal, He clarifies also other traits in either, uh, uh, of Himself, that He is the one. He causes the night to, to chase the daytime, to cover the, uh, to, to cover the daytime, and it chases it rapidly. And likewise, from His creation, the sun and the moon and the stars, they are all subjected and under His command, submissive to His command. Musakharatin bi amrihi. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are under the command and subjected to His command. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah lahu al khalqu wal amr. Verily, the, the creation is entirely His alone. He is the Creator, and He created all things. And He gave, he gave everything its shape and its form. And He is the one who commands uh, the universal command. And likewise, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the legislative command. And He is the blessed and the best. And, uh, and, and Tabarak Allahu Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of of all of the worlds, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have read some of the benefits, Ibn Kathir, the great mufassir and scholar, also muhaddith, of, scholar of tafsir and hadith, also he is mu'arrikh and scholar of history, uh, and the likes, uh, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, what he has mentioned about how to understand this verse, and the verse is similar to this, and that the people have differed with regards to the understanding of the verses of the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal. And also other than that, from the affairs of the unseen, from the issues of Al-Iman, 
the issues of Ar Iman and the pillars of Ar Iman, all of these are from the uh, Ar Imanu Bil Ghaib and believing in the unseen. And we have also seen in our previous classes the only way to understand the unseen is to have information, correct information, because we've never seen the, the unseen is something that we have not seen, nor have we seen anything like it, like the Jannah or the angels or, or, or the likes. We have not seen anything like this or the hellfire. Likewise, from the unseen, the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, there's nothing compared to Him, and we have never seen Him. So there's no way to know anything about Him or anything about His uh, creation that He has made from the unseen, uh, except by way of information. Except by way of authentic and correct information that has been transmitted to us and it has been revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Quran, or in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ibn Kathir he's clarifying, but the way to understand that revelation is the way of a salaf al salih that the people after that, after receiving the revelation, they have differed, and we see in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were all united. And even after the Prophet ﷺ died with regards to creed and belief in the affairs of Iman, they were united. And uh, the deviant sects were not, uh, did not, were not introduced until after the, the death of the majority of the companions, until the end of the era of the, of the companions. عنهم, and then the desires were introduced and the innovations were introduced and, they, uh, and the deviant sects uh, were introduced in ideologies and creed and belief. And this is what uh, Ibn Kathir is referring to. لِلنَّاسِ فِي هَذَا الْمَقَامِ أَقْوَالٌ وَمُقَالَاتٌ كَثِيرَةٌ جِدَّةٌ The people have many statements with regards to this. And the belief in the al-istiwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sifat. But the correct way to understand that, he said, مَذْهَبُ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ The methodology of the righteous and the pious predecessors. And then he clarified some examples of who they are. And he began with Malik. Al Imam Malik, he died in 179. Al Awza'i, he died in 157. Al Thawri, he died in 161. Al Layth ibn Sa'd, he died in 175. Al Shafi'i, he died in 204. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he died in 241. And, uh, and Ishaq ibn Rahuya, he died in 238. And other than them, he said, these are the ones that we must understand these verses according to. If we look at who these people are and their personalities, that they are from the greatest of the narrators of hadith. Each one of these men that he has mentioned, and he has considered them from as salaf as salih they are those men who have carried the transmissions of the Prophet, the narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and transmitted them to us. You will find them in the chains. Ishaq ibn Rahoyah, he's the Shaykh of Bukhari. And also the Shaykh of Ahmed and the likes. And you will find also Ahmed is the Shaykh, or Shafi is the Shaykh of Ahmed, and Malik is the Shaykh of Shafi'i, and all of them, they have narrations, and they're in the chains. They are narrators of hadith. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has reached us by way of them. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has reached us by way of them. They're the ones who have transmitted these narrations. They heard it from their mashaykh, who heard it from their mashaykh, who heard it from the companions in this manner, and they are the ones who have transmitted it to us. So they are the ones who know the meaning of that and how to understand it. And this is an incumbent understanding, the understanding of as salaf as salih that this is the proper way. And he said here again to clarify, and that is, what is that methodology? What is their way? He said, وَهُوَ إِمْرَارُهَا كَمَا جَعَدْ هُوَ إِمْرَارُهَا أي يعني هذه الآيات, آيات الصفات وما يشاكلها إمرارها كما جاءت To believe in them as they have come. They heard them and it was narrated to them from the companions to their students and from their students to their students how did they how did they learn these narrations and how did they believe in them just as they come and how did they believe in them just as they come and they taught their students how did they take them narrations just as they come in this manner they did not interpretate them and, and change the meanings nor did they distort the words nor did they deny the understanding of the of of the verses or the hadith in this regard nor did they uh, liking it to the creation. They didn't do any of this. Rather, they accepted these narrations just as they have come. The narrations with regards to the nuzul of Allah Azza wa Jal that He descends in a manner befitting His majesty. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They accepted these narrations and they did not distort the meaning. They accepted these narrations that they did not distort the words. They accepted these narrations and they did not liken Allah's uh, descent to the creation. They accepted these narrations and, and li like this and they believed in them. And this is the proper methodology and this is the proper way that is the way of success and the way 
that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated them to his companions, and it was revealed to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. From the evidences, likewise, this great Imam he was uh, he was alive in seven hundred or died in seven hundred and seventy four, but before them uh, and, and before him, we were reading yesterday from another great scholar of Hadith, Al Imam Al Tirmidhi, Abu Isa, Muhammad ibn Isa Al Tirmidhi. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he died in the year 279 from the great students of Bukhari. And we're reading the narration of uh, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu about uh, the fact that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he said that Allah, he accepts the sadaqah. Actually, this wording here I mentioned is authentic, but there's a similar wording from this narration of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu and, and Bukhari and Muslim with a, a similar wording. It's the same narration, but the words are a bit different. Uh, the words are a bit different, but the, the meaning there is the same. That Allah is the He takes the charity in His right hand, and He causes it to grow, and He causes it to grow, Subhanahu wa Taala, and He and He cultivates it and nourishes it in a manner befitting His Majesty, Subhanahu wa Taala. So we're reading the commentary, and this is from the benefit of this book, Al Imam Al Tirmidhi, from the virtues of this book that's specific to him and his work here. That the other. Uh, books of the Sunnah did not have any the specific miza or characteristic and quality of of, of Jami at Tirmidhi is this commentary that he has brief commentary in the end mentioning the methodology of the scholars of Hadith and the ulama of of the Sunnah in his time and, and previous from his time so he says here وَقَدْ خَالَ غَيْرُ وَاحِدٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ mentioning about this narration mentioning that Allah is a wajal, he has a right hand that's what's mentioned in this in this ver, in this Hadith. In this hadith, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He mentioned that Allah has a right hand and that He takes the charity and He accepts it, Subhanahu wa Taala, and He grows it, Subhanahu wa Taala. Al Imam Al Tirmidhi he says, "وَقَدْ قَالَ غَيْرُ وَاحِدٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ فِي هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ." More than one person from the people of knowledge has mentioned about this narration, "وَمَا يُشْبِهُ هَذَا مِنَ الرِّوَايَاتِ فِي الصِّفَاتِ." And that which is similar to this narration with regards to the narrations, uh, with regards to the sifat and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, al Rabb and the descent of the Lord Tabaraka wa Taala, kulla laylatin ila sama dunya, descending every night to the to the heavens of the dunya. Qalu, they all said, the people of knowledge, and before him, qad thabtat al riwayatu fi hada. وَيُؤْمَنُوا بِهَا وَلَا يُتَوَهَّمُ وَلَا يُقَالُ كَيْفِ He's mentioning the methodology of those ulama that have preceded him. He's narrating their, their path and their way with regards to the sifat. He said that these narrations have been affirmed. And they have reached us authentically on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they must be believed in. They must be believed in and one will not uh, be deluded or misunderstand them. Rather he believes in them and he does not say how. He does not say how. So if we remember previously, uh, Ibn Kathir, he mentioned that likewise. بِغَيْرِ تَخِيهِ He mentioned without تَعْثِيلٍ وَلَا تَمْثِيلٍ وَلَا تَكِيفٍ uh, And we know that, that uh, the ulama have mentioned from them, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, they have clarified that there are four mahdhurat, yani things that are impermissible with regards to the understanding of the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal. That there is no tahrif and there is no ta'til, and that there is no takif and there is no Tamthil. These four things are impermissible and haram with regards to understanding the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now he's mentioning one of them here. Ha bila kayf. Wala yuqalu kayf. You don't say how. So to make takif of the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal and to say how, this is not permissible. This is not permissible. This is haram. Rather it's an innovation. The evidence will come. And in the statement of Imam Malik insha'Allah that this is an innovation to ask how. So we don't say how. Uh, the, the, the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal are this is not permissible because no one has seen him and no one has seen anything like him and all we can know about him is what he has informed us about himself subhanahu wa ta'ala what his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us about him and this is where we stop and this is where we stop and we've seen that the ulama they mentioned with regards to the belief in the sifat al-kalam fi sifati far'un and al-kalam fi that that to speak and to understand the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, this is based upon understanding His essence and His reality, the reality of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if a person, we ask some people who deny the attributes of Allah, does Allah exist? He says, yes. So the same, then His existence, there's no, His existence does not ex- resemble anything in the, in the creation. The, the existence of Allah is not like the existence of any of the creation. It's completely different. We don't know how His existence is. 
And we don't know how his that is, but we know and we affirm that for him without any likening to the dawat of the makhlukin. Naam, so the same way with the sifat. The same way that we affirm for Allah Azza wa Jalla that He exists in a manner befitting His majesty and we do not know how He exists. His, his, the reality of His existence. He, 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 he exists with no beginning and with no ending. Al-awwal, alladhi laysa qabluhu shay. Al-akhir, alladhi laysa ba'duhu shay. Like this, this is what we believe in Him, but the reality of that we do not know. Likewise the sifat. Likewise the sifat. Then we, we can only say about His attributes what He has said about Himself. And we cannot go beyond that. And we cannot go beyond that. So we do not say kayf. وَلَا يُقَارُ كَيْف This is from the statement of Al-Imam At-Tirmidhi, rahimahullah ta'ala, the great imam and scholar of hadith. وَهَكَذَا رُوِيَ أَنْ مَالِكَ إِبْنِ أَنَسِ Likewise, this has been narrated from Malik, any before At-Tirmidhi. By how many years? A hundred years, exactly. He did, Tirmidhi died in 279. Imam Malik 179. A hundred years before him, this has been narrated from him too. A hundred years before this man collected this book, this has been narrated from another great scholar. He died in 179 after the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Malik, he said, وَهَكَذَا رُوِيَ عَنْ مَالِكِ بِنِ أَنَسِ وَسُفْيَانِ بِنْ عُيَيْنَ He died in 180, uh, 197. Sufyan ibn Uyayna and uh, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. Likewise, in 181. أَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا فِي هَذِهِ الْأَحَادِيثِ That they all mentioned about these narrations, these ahadith, أَمِرُّوهَا بِلَا كَيْف أَمِرُّوهَا بِلَا كَيْف This is the methodology, أَمِرُّوهَا This is in the Jami Tirmidhi, أَمِرُّوهَا الْإِمْرَارِ إِمْرَارُوهَا كَمَا جَاءَ That's exactly what Ibn Kathir mentioned, the methodology. He transmitted the methodology of the, of the Salaf with these sifat, إِمْرَارُوهَا كَمَا جَاءَتْ If we go back 500 years to the books of Hadith, to the books of the Salaf as salih as he mentioned, we find that he was true and trustworthy and honest in his transmission. And that's what they said. And that's what they said. And we have the book of Imam Thirmidhi as an evidence for him. And as an evidence for this creed, that that's what they said, أَمِرُوهَا كَمَا جَاءَتْ That you believe in them as they come, بِلَا كَيْف and you don't say, you don't say how. Ibn Tirmidhi, he says, وَهَكِذَا قَوْلُ أَهْلِ الْإِلْمِ مِنْ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ And like this, this is the statement in any the creed. The statement in the creed. Whenever the word قَوْل is used in, 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 in an absolute sense, it means that to say it with the tongue and to believe it in the heart. قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا يعني قولوه بلسانكم بلسانتكم واتقدوه في بخلوبكم يعني to say it whenever you, the statement is something you say it and you believe it in your heart if not that would be hypocrisy so this is the قول of أهل العلم meaning their creed and belief their statement meaning their creed and their belief uh, from أهل السنة والجماعة from أهل السنة والجماعة he says أما الجهمية فأنكرت هذه الروايات وقالوا هذا تشبيه as for الجهمية Al-Jahmiyyah, they are the Nufat. They are the, and the, the Mu'attila. They are the ones who have de, de negated the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And they have denied them. And some of them are worse than others. And they, and they have categories or levels of, of their misguidance and, and, and the likes. But the Jahmiyyah, they are called the Mu'attila or the Nufat. The Nufat. And they, uh, they, 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 they uh, deny the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla. They, they deny the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Why do they do that? He says, they say, هَذَا تَشْبِيهٌ He said, this is tashbih. Tashbih, it means to, uh, to make a resemblance. It means to make a resemblance. Huh? This is one of those mahdurat. What are they, the four, that, with regards to the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jalla? Huh? Uh-huh. Aha. Aha, four of them. Billah ta no minu billahi bima billahi azawajal, wa ma wasafa bihi nafsahu, wa wasafa bihi rasulu hu sallallahu wari wa salam bila tahrif. Wala ta'til. Wala takif wala tamfil. Like this. Tahrif, ta'til, takif, tamfil. These four here. Tamfil is tashbi. Tamfil means tashbi, it means tamfil. Here he says that this is tashbi. So they mean the same thing. Some of the ulama, they mentioned to use the word tamthil is better, although it means the same thing as tashbih, because this is what has come in the, the Qur'an. Yani, laysa kemithrihi shay. Laysa kemithrihi shay. Wuhu sami al basiyah. But uh, tashbih, it means, uh, it means uh, a tamthil. So we have people who, have, with regards to the sifat of Allah, they're considered mushabbiha. 
They're kasir al mushabbiha. They're people who resemble Allah Azza wa Jal to the creation. Iyadhan billah. We have seen previously that what has been mentioned about that, that this is, this is disbelief. The Shaykh of Bukhari, he mentioned that this is disbelief. Uh, the mushabbiha, they, re, they resemble the attributes of Allah to the attributes of the creation. On the other hand, uh, there is another extreme and they are considered al-mu'attila. Al-mu'attila. And they are those, who, the nufad, they, they deny the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ahli Sunnah, they're between the two. The people, the mushabbiha, the yuthbitun. يُثْبِتُونَ الصِّفَاتِ لِلَّهِ لل... تَعَالَى وَيُشَبِّهُونَهَا فَأَرِثْبَاتْ حَسَنٌ وَالتَّشْبِيهِ وال... لَكِنَ التَّشْبِيهِ هَذَا السَّيِّ So they, they affirm the مُشَبِّهَا They affirm the attributes but they liken them to the creation To affirm the attributes is correct but to liken them is incorrect So had sunnah they affirm them without any uh, likening They affirm them, they have إِثْبَاتْ بِلَا تَشْبِيهِ Ahl sunnah يُثْبِتُونَ الصِّفَاتِ بِلَا Bila tashbih, they we affirm the the attributes of Allah Azza without resembling to the creation, and the the leader for that, laisa kamithrihi shayun wa huwa sami al basir. Every believer should memorize this verse. Laisa kamithrihi shayun wa huwa sami al basir. There's nothing like or resembling unto him, nothing like unto him, but he is huh, the all hearing and the all seeing. So this in this verse there is negation and affirmation. He, yeah, he, he affirmed that he has hearing and seeing subhanahu wa ta'ala but he negated that there is a resemblance. So this is the way of uh, Ahl Sunnah, the way of the Quran. They affirm them but they uh, and they negate that but they affirm the, the attributes for him but they negate from him any resemblance, any resemblance. As for the ma- the muatila, then they have negated and and denied the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla. They made tanzi. Huh? And when, when, whenever they made ten, they made tanzi, we la ithbat. And this is uh, the tanzi is uh, also good, but it's it's done without making uh, a ta'thil. A tanzi, we la ta'thil. Tanzi means to to free Allah Azza wa Jalla from any defects. So they those people they they have understood the muatila they they found that or they believe that to ascribe sifat to Allah Azza wa Jal is to uh, liken him so then they they ran from that and they denied the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal saying that yani, he, he 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 they denied yani, they made tanzi but they made uh, until they made ta'thil and yani, they they denied the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal so the people of the sunnah nam we uh, negate from him subhanahu wa ta'ala any attribute of uh, uh, of uh, imperfection and uh, any attribute of uh, deficiency, but we affirm for him at the same time. So we affirm for him the attributes that he affirmed for himself, but we negate any resemblance. That we negate any resemblance. And this is the proper methodology. And this is the proper methodology, and this is the understanding of that verse. Laysa kemithrihi shay'un, and this is tanzihun. Tanzihun. Laysa kemithrihi shay. Nam nunazihuhu an shabi wa nadir. That we free him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, from having any resemblance whatsoever or any uh, comparison whatsoever. Lam yakun lahu kufu wan ahad. There's nothing like him whatsoever, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that's not left like that. Tanzi alone, brother Tanzi, uh, any resemblance and affirming for him what he affirmed for himself. Now, what, what he affirmed for himself or what he affirmed or what his Prophet affirmed for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here they said the, the jahmiya, who are the mu'atila. They said, "Hada uh, tashbihun, hada tashbihun." This is their. This is their. They say, if you say that Allah has hearing, this is tashbih. If Allah sees, this is tashbih. If Allah has a hand, this is tashbih. Resembling. This is their creed. So they said, if you do that, this is disbelief. So then we, we have to deny that. So from their from their uh, statements that they have mentioned, that they have said that Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, He has knowledge with no knowledge. Alimun bila ilm. Sami'un bila sama' He is hearing without He is all hearing without hearing And then he is all knowing without knowing And then they have then he, This is what they mention And they have even gone to extent They said Allah Azza wa Jal He is not inside the creation He is not outside the creation He is not in a place He is not attached to it He is not here He is not there He is not up He is not down He is not any, They have denied uh, Allah Azza wa Jal entirety All of his attributes Naam? In this manner and to the extent that the ulama have mentioned that the mu'atila ya'buduna adaman. That if somebody, that they worship some, they, they worship non-existence, these people. Because if somebody wanted to describe something that's non-existent, what would they say? 
It's not it's not it's something that doesn't exist. You say it's not inside the world. It's not outside the world. It's not attached to time. It's not here. It's not there. It's not up. It's not left. It's not right. It's not down. It's not white. It's not black. It's not. It, it, what is it then? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So then the ulama they mentioned Ibn Qayyim. He said that al muatila yabuduna adaman. They worship non-existence. Their, their 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 god that they worship and they describe it doesn't exist. So they, 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 they flew from, uh, uh, from making tashbih with the makhluq to making tashbih with the ma'adum. So they went from a tashbih say ila a tashbih aswa. They went from making tashbih and uh, resembling Allah to His creation to resembling, to resembling Him to nothing and to non-existence. So they, they went from one aspect uh, or one foul aspect of tashbih to an even fouler and worse aspect of, of tashbih, the, mu, the mu'atila. As for the Mushabbiha, then Ibn Qayyim he said, Rahimahullah, Ya'buduna Sanaman. They worship a Sanam, and he, because they have made the Allah Azawajal like his creation. So they're worshiping a Sanam, because Allah Azawajal, he's not like his creation, nor is he non existence. No, nor is he non existent, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what they claim he is, that's not Allah Azawajal, and what they claim he is likewise, that's not Allah Azawajal. Allah, he is free of that. He is above his arch, above his throne, in a manner befitting his majesty. And he sees and he hears all things, and he knows all things, and he's powerful and strong and wise, and he is able to do all things. And he has attributes of perfection, subhanahu wa taala. And they're not like the attributes of, of the creation whatsoever. They're not like the attributes of the creation uh, whatsoever. It has been narrated from some of the scholars of Hadith, likewise uh, from them, Hamad ibn uh, Hamad ibn Zaid. He died in the same year as Imam Malik. What year was that? 179. Hamad ibn Zayd, uh, he, he mentioned, he said that the, 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 the Jahmiyyah, they're like a people who said that in our house we have a tree. And he said, They said, in our house, there's a, there's a pine tree, a, a, a date tree in our house. So they said to him, okay, does it have leaves? He said, no, it doesn't have leaves. He said, okay, does it have branches? He said, no, no, it doesn't have branches. He said, okay, is there clusters of dates? He said, no, no, there's no clusters of dates. He said, he said okay, is there a trunk? He said, no, there's no trunk. He said, okay, there's no, there's no date tree in your house then. And if you, if you, how can there be a date tree? It doesn't have a trunk, it doesn't have leaves, it doesn't have dates, it doesn't have clusters, it doesn't have branches. Well, then if that's the case, there's no, there's no, um, there's no date tree in your, in your house. Because a date tree, it has attributes. And this is the case. So, the, so Allah Azza wa Jalla, likewise, He has attributes, but they're not like the creation, though. We have affirmed that yesterday, that it's possible in the creation itself that there are things that have the same name and there's no resemblance whatsoever. Like what? The clock hand, huh? or the face, huh? the face, huh? knowledge. Knowledge. People's knowledge is different, huh? or, 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 but the, the point is that there's, for example, the hands on the clock. This is the clearest example. There's hands on the clock and there's hands on my, on my arm. There's nothing the same whatsoever between them. So if we can establish this, there's things in this dunya that has the same name and they're completely different. And whenever we mention hand to hand, we never think that in our mind ever a resemblance whatsoever. If we can establish this from the creation, then لِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْعَالَى Allah Azza wa Jalla, of course He's not like His creation. Of course He's not like the hands on the clock. He said he has hands. They're not like the hands on the clock. And they're not like the hands of anything in the creation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Completely different. And there's nothing like him whatsoever. But who knows better than him about his attributes? He does. He affirmed them for him. So what is incumbent upon a believer to say? Huh? What, what he said. What he said. Somebody he said, Allah ha, he has hands. Allah he said he has hands. Allah said he has a face. And his book, he mentioned that. He affirmed that for himself. How could somebody come along and say, no, he doesn't? How could somebody come along and say, that means something else? And the Prophet ﷺ, he affirmed that likewise. He did not tell, tell us that means something else. Those who he taught directly, and they were from the people of the Arabs, they had the Arabic language fluently. And they didn't, they didn't learn from the Prophet that it meant something else. And they didn't teach their students that it meant something else. And they didn't teach their, and they didn't learn from their students that it meant something else. Not until the people of desires entered into the Ummah and the deviations occurred and the Ummah split. In their creed, and the, the people of desires, the Khawarij came, and the Rafida came, and the Mu'tazila came, and the Murji'a came, and the Qadariya came, until these mis- misguided ideologies came, the people was upon one creed. And they're narrating these narrations, After that, the people of desires came. 
Now, so to understand these texts is re- it's required for a believer to understand them as the, the way of the people of Hadith, those who narrated it. And this is the meaning of that statement of Ibn, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah in his Lamiyyah we mentioned yesterday. That's his methodology. And this is the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. That all of the verses of the ayat, uh, we believe in them as they have come. We believe in them as we, they have come. And we refer that back to those who have narrated it from the first generations. And those who narrated these narrations, they're the ones that, <laughs> that, it's, it, that the responsibility was upon them. They're the ones who narrated it to us. And I protect them from anything that the, the mind could imagine or try to resemble to the creation. So we go back to the statement of Tirmidhi. He says, He says that That these narrations, they have been authenticated and affirmed on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so they must be believed in. That's from his right. From the right of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tasdiquhu bima akhbara. Tasdiquhu bima akhbara. This is one of the greatest rights of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we love him as is required, and we believe in him, and the belief that is required, we must believe what he has mentioned. What, have, what he has affirmed us, whatever he has mentioned and narrated to us, we have to believe him. He's the messenger of Allah. Tasdiquhu fi ma akhbara. Wa mimma akhbara bihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadhi sifat. Wa hadha al-hadith bi'aynihi. And Allah lahu yameen. That Allah has wajid, he has a right hand. Wa yakhudu sadaqat. And he takes, the, and he takes with it the charity. Uh, this is something that has been established on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must believe in it. He didn't tell us how. So we can't say how. Huh? We never seen anything like his hand. So we can't say how it is. And we never seen his hand. So we can't talk about it whatsoever. Only thing we can say is, huh, سَمِعْنَا وَطَعْنَا huh, That we hear and we obey. This is our Lord. But you know what? Allah Akbar. From the belief and from the, from the benefit of Al-Iman, is that also what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, is that if you believe in Allah, then you will see Him. You will see Him. You don't see Him now. And you can't see Him now. And you prostrate before Him now. And you believe in Him now. And you know He sees you and, you and you lower your gaze. And if you fall into an error, you repent. Because He know that He sees you and you can't see Him. But there will come a day that the believers will see Him. There will come a day that the believers will see Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what I believe. This is what a believer hopes for. The ulama, they say that whoever denied from the sifat and in this dunya, they will be, he will be denied that. He will be denied that in the hereafter. How could somebody see Allah and he denied that Allah can be seen? Some people say, no, you can't see Allah. Like the Jahmiyyah. You, you, you can't. Allah has not seen. He's not, he's not heard. He doesn't speak. They, they mention all of these things about Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah, He affirmed it for Himself. Now, so the way of a believer is that, like He says, يُؤْمَنُوا بِهَا وَلَا يُتَوَهَمْ وَلَا يُقَالُوا كَيْفْ And يتوهم, and يتوهم, and يتوهم, and يتوهم. You don't think about how it is and try to resemble it to the creation and be deluded about that. No, you can't think about Allah Azza wa Jal except for what He has informed us about Him. That's it. If we want to think about how great Allah is, what we're required to do is to think about His creation. To think about His... If you want to realize I need to... We don't ponder on Allah Azza wa Jal. You can't reach that. You can't reach that. You can't ponder on Allah Azza wa Jal. Except for what He has informed us about. But we're commanded to ponder on His creation. Huh? And they, they, you ponder on the creation, and then from that they say, Subhanaka. They realize how great Allah is. Pondering on His creation, now they realize how great Allah is. Now, and they glorify Him and they know His greatness. Now, but as for Him, then we, we say we believe in Him, and we don't uh, try to understand Him, and we don't say how. We don't say how. He said, This has been narrated from Malik ibn Anas and Sufyan ibn Uyayna. This has been narrated from Abdullah ibn Mubarak. All of them they have said about these hadith, believe in them as they have come without saying how. And so Imam Tirmidhi, what is he saying? <laughs> he says, I'm on the way of the... He said, I'm upon their way. I'm upon their way. This is what they said, this is what we say. They're the ones who narrated these narrations to us. If we look in this book, we'll find that he, in these chains of Tirmidhi, you'll find Imam Malik, you will, or you will find Ibn Mubarak, you will find these. They're narrators of hadith. They narrated to him, and this is what they said. Whenever we got this narration, this is what they told us. 
أمروها كما جاءت. Who knows better than this? This is this is the way of the people. This is the way of safety and security. This is the correct belief and the correct creed. Not to think about how they are and to talk about how they are and to, that his hands means this and his hands means that or his face means this or he doesn't have a face or so on and so forth or his mercy is like this mercy or his understanding is like, his knowledge is like this. Like all of this, this is not permissible. That's not the way that it was transmitted to us. That's not the way that it was transmitted to us. He said, وَقَدْ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَ فِي غَيْرِ مَوْضِئٍ مِنْ كِتَابِهِ الْيَدِ وَالسَّمَعُ وَالْبَصَرُ Allah subhanahu ibn al-Tirmidhi, he mentions now, he said, And verily Allah the Most High, He has mentioned in more than one place in His book, the hand, the hearing, the seeing. فَتَأَوَّلَتِ الْجَهْمِيَةُ هَذِهِ الْآيَاتِ وَفَسَّرُوهَا عَلَى غَيْرِ مَا فَسَّرَ أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ he said, so the Jahmiyyah, they misinterpreted these verses and they interpreted them other than the way of the people of knowledge. Who are the people of knowledge with him? Ah, uh, Ibn Mubarak, Imam Malik, the scholars of Hadith, Bukhari, he said, that the Jahmiyyah, they interpreted these verses other than their way. This is again, oh, this is, he's upon, this is the way of the Salaf al This is the methodology. From two, he's 200, he died in 279. Uh, and he, uh, this is not something new. This is the deen of Allah Azza wa This is what Allah revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the campaigns learned that and their students learned that and their students learned and that path is still going until the day of resurrection. There will always remain a group from my ummah uh, victorious upon the truth. No harm will come to them from those people who abandoned them like the Jahmiyyah, like the Mu'attila. And like, and like the deviant sects in our days likewise. Now no harm will come to them. This, this group will remain. There will always remain a group upon the haq, upon this way. The way of the salaf al-sari. Now لا يضرهم من خذلهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم كذلك Until the command of Allah comes and they're like that. Upon victor- they're, they're victorious. They're upon the correct creed. They're upon the correct belief. They're upon the, the straight path. They're upon obedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مُسْتَقِيمُونَ عَلَى الدِّينَ They're upright and steadfast all the way until the day of resurrection. All the way or before the day of resurrection until the command of Allah comes. There will always remain a group like this from the Ummah of Muhammad. They will not ever all of them go astray. There will always be a group. Imam Ahmad, he said, إِنْ لَمْ يُكُنُوا أَحْلَ الْحَدِيثِ فِي لَا أَدْرِ مَنْ هُمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُكُنُوا أَحْلَ الْحَدِيثِ فِي لَا أَدْرِ مَنْ هُمْ If that people, that, that victorious exists, that, that victorious group, if they're not the people of hadith, I don't know who they are. If, the, if, the, if he's not referring to the people of hadith, and who's the people of hadith for Imam Ahmed? These narrators, these narrators that we have been mentioned, Ibn Mubarak, he's from the people of Hadith. Imam Malik, he's from the people of Hadith. Imam Shafi, he's from the people of Hadith. Nam, uh, uh, Sufyan al and Sufyan ibn Uyayna, and Hamad ibn Zayd, these, these names, they, they are the people of Hadith. They are the ones who narrated the chains. They are the ones in the chain all the way to Imam Ahmed. If this group that's victorious is not the people of Hadith, then who are they? Then who are they? Nam, this is what they, they have mentioned. Imam Bukhari, he mentioned, whom Ahlul Ilm. Nam, and they, and they mentioned the other, than him, they mentioned uh, whom uh, uh, Yazid ibn Harun, he mentioned whom ashab al-hadith. And the victorious sect, they're the people of, of hadith. And they're not the people like some people of hadith in the masjid here named Ahl al-Hadith. Or some, uh, some uh, organization in some country called Ahl al-Hadith. La. The people of hadith, the people are upon their way. And the people of hadith, those who narrated these, these narrations to us. That's what is being referred to. So the Jahmiyyah, they contradicted them. They contradicted them. Nam, so he says, وَقَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَخْلُقْ آدَمْ بِيَدِهِ أَوْذِ بِاللَّهِ This is what they said. They said Allah, He didn't create uh, Adam with His hand. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, he, he created Adam with His hand. And even He mentioned that in His book, in His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that about Him. And then the Jahmiyyah, they come and say, Allah didn't create Adam with His hand. Allah doesn't have a hand. It means something else. هَذَا تَحْرِيفٌ هَذَا تَحْرِيفٌ لِلْمَعْنَى this is this is distortion and distorting the meanings. Now, this is what they said. And uh, Tirmidhi he says, "Waqalu in the ma'na al yad hauna al quwa." And they said the meaning of uh, of yad here is power or strength. Now, is power or strength? He says, "Qala ishaq ibn Qala ishaq ibn Ibrahim." Ishaq ibn Ibrahim. And he, his name like this is maybe not well known, but this is Ibn Ahuya. Ishaq ibn Ibrahim ibn Ahuya. Rahim Allah Taala. He said. إنما يكون التشبيه إذا قال يد كيد أو مثل يد. The only way this would be considered tashbih if you say a hand like a hand or similar to a hand, huh? If you say it like this, yes, this is tashbih. They, they, they say that it's tashbih. If you say Allah has a hand, they say it's tashbih. We say no. He said if you say that his hand is like this hand, oh, that's tashbih. 
Or if you say the hand is similar to that hand, oh now, okay, now you made tashbi. Nam. He says, oh sam'un ka sam'in, oh mithru sam'in. So if you say uh, that he has hearing like this hearing or similar to this hearing, then now this is tashbi. He says, فَإِذَا قَالَ سَمْعٌ كَسَمْعٍ أَوْ مِثْلُ سَمْعٍ فَهَذَا تَشْبِيهِ فَهَذَا تَشْبِيهِ أَمَّا إِذَا قَالَ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ يَدٌ وَسَمْعٌ وَبَصْرٌ وَلَا يُكُلُ كَيْفْ وَلَا يُكُلُ مِثْلُ سَمْعٍ وَلَا كَسَمْعٍ فَهَذَا لَا يُكُنُ تَشْبِيهَ نعم إسحاق بن رهوية he says as for if you say the same way Allah says that he has a hand and hearing and seeing but you don't say how uh, and you don't say it's like hearing or like uh, his hearing is like this hearing or like this. He said, this is not tashbih. That is not tashbih. Naam, because what did Allah he say about the hearing? And what did Allah say about the seeing? He has it, but there's no tashbih. There's no tamthir. Laysa kamithrihi shay. Wa hu samir basir. So then you say the same thing, Allah. Is he samir basir? Does he have sama? Yes. Does he have basr? Yes. But laysa kamithrihi shay. There's nothing like unto him. Yes, he doesn't hear like we hear. He doesn't hear like an ant hears. He doesn't hear like a microphone hears or, or, or whatever. He doesn't hear like anything in the creation. It's completely different and greater than that. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know how. He hears in a manner befitting his majesty. So to say that, that's not making tasbih. That's what he's trying to prove here. Refuting this any, this false creed and belief. Now, I mean, he says, وَهُوَ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ is just as Allah has said in his book, the, uh, Ibn Tirmidhi, he continues to transmit the statement of Ibn Rahuya. Uh, Ibn Rahuya, he died in, uh, in 238. Uh, he says, لَيْسَ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيلِ بَسِيرٍ And this has been transmitted to us in the book of Imam Tirmidhi. This is the methodology. This is the understanding with regards to the sifat of Allah Azza That we affirm what he affirmed for himself. In his book, and we affirm for what for him, what Allah, his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has affirmed for him. But we do not make any distortion in the meaning, and we don't make any distortion in the word itself. Likewise, and we don't also deny the meaning, and we don't ask how the meaning is, and we don't resemble the meaning to anything in the creation. But what we say in submission that we believe in it as it has come. And he has these attributes as he has mentioned about himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has the attributes that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned about him. And they are in a manner befitting his majesty. And they are a manner, in a manner befitting his majesty. If we look at the creation, we see how uh, we can see his majesty. He's great. How great is Allah azawajal creating us from that fluid. And so on and so forth that we have seen in previous classes. So we see how great he is subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he has these attributes in a manner befitting his majesty. In a manner befitting his majesty. So we see the methodology in understanding these uh, verses of the ayat and also the hadith of the, uh, excuse me, the verses of the sifat and the hadith likewise of the sifat and that which is similar to that from the affairs of the unseen. The methodology of Ibn Kathir and he referred back to the scholars of hadith and we have seen likewise Tirmidhi and he also referred back to those same scholars of hadith, their understanding and the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih. There's another scholar of tafsir from uh, from the Salaf that were upon the that's upon the way of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is Al Imam al Baghawi. Al Imam al Baghawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he died in the year 516. He has a great tafsir also, likewise, and he's upon the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. With the same verse that the author, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhabi, mentioned here, in Rabbakum Allahu Ladi Khalaq al Samawati wal Ad, fi Sittati Ayyam and Thumma Stawa al Arsh. Al Baghawi, likewise, he mentioned here some, some very beneficial. beneficial uh, Transmission. He mentioned here. He says, "Amma wa amma ahl sunnati fayakuruna aristiwa usifatu nillahi bila kaf." And it's very important. We see that the people of the Sunnah, all throughout history and all throughout time, they're from different lands, from from different lands, and from different generations, from different countries, and from different places, from different times. The difference between their times, sometimes hundreds of years, and they all say the same thing. We look into their book. It's like it was all written by one pen, like it all came from the heart of one man. Ah, but they're all different times, different places, but they're all upon the same creed and the same path. The, the, the same creed and the same path. What does Imam Baghawi say? He died in the year 516. Uh, Ibn Kathir, 774. And he after him by a couple of hundred years. He says, وَأَمَّا أَهْلُ السُنَّةِ فَيَقُولُونَ أَرِسْتِي وَأُسِيفَةٌ لِلَّهِ بِلَا كَيْفِ As for the people of the Sunnah, they say that أَرِسْتِي rising above the throne, uh, or rising is, a, is, a, is an attribute for Allah Azza wa Jalla, and they say, and they don't ask how. وَيَجِبُ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ الْإِمَانُ بِهِ And it's obligatory for a man to believe in it. 
وَيَكِرُوا الْعِلْمَ بِهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And rely uh, or entrust the knowledge of this sifa to Allah Azza wa Jal. Meaning the knowledge of, the, of how it is. As for the knowledge of, the, uh, of the, the meaning, the general meaning, we know the meaning. The meaning of the words, al-istiwa, it means to rise. Uh, it means al-ulu, nam, wa sa'ida, wa rtafa'a. But as for how, this is what we entrust to Allah Azza wa Jal. So he says, وَسَأَلَ رَجُّلٌ مَالِكَ بِنْ عَنِسِ uh, there's a man, he asked Ali Imam Malik, and he said about the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ar-Rahmanu al-Arsh istawa. There's a man, he came to Imam Malik, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he asked him about the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ar-Rahman rose above the throne. Now he says, Kayf istawa, how did he rise above the throne? And in this mention, he's in, the, he's in the, the Prophet's masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This man came to him and asked him this. Imam Malik, he died again in 179. He came and asked him, Ar-Rahmanu al-Arsh istawa, Kayf istawa? Said the, uh, the, uh, Ar-Rahman, the most gracious, he rose above his throne. How did he rise above his throne? Imam Malik, Al-Baghawi, he mentioned, فَأَطْرَقَ رَأْسَهُ مَرِيًّا وَعَلَاهُ وَعَلَاهُ أَرْرَحْضَى He said that he, he moved his head and he up and down for a, for a moment and he pondering and, and the sweat became, he had a lot of sweat on his, on his face and for he became very hot and he very disturbed. رَحِيمَهَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى ثُمَّ قَالَ أَرِسْتِيْوَاءُ غَيْرُ مَجْهُولٌ This is the methodology that he has established at Imam Malik. And the, the, the Imam Malik that is well known from the, the people from, from the Maliki Madhab, they have followed that way, huh? And he, meaning in fiqh. But in an aqidah, we see are, are, are they on the same way. What is the aqidah of Imam Malik with the sifat? He said, أَرِسْتِيْوَاءُ غَيْرُ مَجْهُولٌ the, the istiwa is not unknown, meaning the meaning of it. It's known what that means. We know what istiwa means in the Arabic language. Naam, so this is what he says. As for how it is, it cannot be understood. The meaning is not unknown. And we know the meaning of these words and what they mean in the Arabic language. As for the reality of how they are with regards to Allah, جل, then this is not understood. This is not compre- This is incomprehensible. You can't comprehend this. It, it, it is غَيْرُ maqul. And then he said, uh, what imanu bihi wajibun, and to believe in them is obligatory. To believe in them is obligatory. Was su'alu anhu bid'ah, and to ask about how that is is an innovation. Where did he get this from? How is that an innovation? Because the companions. Because no, that's right. Because what, the, what is the methodology of the companions and those before him? Imraruha kama jad. They didn't say kaif. Imraruha. So to say kaif, this is innovation. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. The Salaf al Salih, they didn't do that. So, this is the methodology. He said, uh, So then he said, I don't think you're anybody except for someone who's misguidance, uh, a person of misguidance. So they commanded him to, to and, and he commanded him to be thrown out of the masjid. So, here we see this is the methodology. And he mentioned here with istiwa, but this is with all of the sifat, that the meaning is not unknown, meaning we know the meaning, the meaning of these words. Like, for example, hand. We know the meaning of hand. Nam, knowledge. We know the meaning of knowledge. Mercy. We know the meaning of mercy. The attributes of Allah. He's described with hearing. We know the meaning of hearing. So, just like we know the meaning of istiwa. To, to, to rise. We know the meaning of these words. But as for how they are with regards to Allah, Azawajal, we don't know the meaning of how. So we affirm these uh, for Allah Azawajal, with the meaning. But we don't say how. And we don't know how. Like this. And so the, the meaning is not unknown. And Al-ma'na ma'loom. Wal kayf majhul. Naam, and, and to believe in it is an obligation. To believe in it is an obligation and to ask about it is an innovation. So then that's the case with the face of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ So what do we say about the face? The sifa. Huh? مَعْلُومْ غَيْرُ مَجْهُولْ أَمَّا الْكَيْفِ فَغَيْرُ مَعْقُولْ وَالْإِمَانُ بِهِ وَاجِبٌ وَالسُؤَالُ عَنْهُ بِدْعَةٌ this, this is the methodology of Imam Malik. That we know the meaning of the word face, but as for how it is with Allah Azza wa Jalla, we don't know. And to believe in it is an obligation. Why? Because it came in the Qur'an. Allah, He mentioned about that about Himself in His book, and it's revealed in His Qur'an. And then to ask about it is an innovation, because those who preceded us in piety and righteousness did not ask about it. The same thing with a hand. Do we know the meaning of hand? This is the methodology of Imam Malik. If they want to be the people, they claim to be a Maliki. But they, don't, they follow Imam Malik in fiqh, but they don't follow him in aqidah. They claim to be Shafi'i. They follow Imam Shafi'i in, in what? In fiqh, but they don't follow him in aqidah. This is greater. 
Akidah is greater. It's the base and the foundation of the deen. They, they claim some of them even uh, other methodologies, but they don't follow them in, in, the, in the foundations of the deen. They follow, he says, for example, he's Maliki. Fil fiqh wa ashari. Fil aqidah. Or he's Shafi'i. And fiqh ma turididi. Ma turididi in aqidah. Now these people, they deny the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. They're not from Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, we know their methodology. Amir Ruha. Amir Ruha kama ja'at. Those people who do not do that, they're not from Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. They're not from Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Now, so this is the methodology of as Salaf al-Salih. Yani ifbatu sifat lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala kama tariqu bi jalaihi subhanahu wa ta'ala wa azamatihi. Now, hadha wa sallallahu wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.